So most people can edit a video, right? But my question is, who do these people call when they want a video edited? Let me show you who. So today I'm gonna be showing you guys exactly how to recreate some of these awesome Numby effects. So today I've got some smooth animations you can put on your text, your images, your video, literally anything you could possibly wanna put into a single video, you can use these animations. After that, we've got a smooth yet elegant transition. And then lastly, we have some beautiful looking text. I mean, what more could you want? Now our first effect is gonna be this jump in and shake animation. Like I said, you can put this on text, images, videos, basically anything you could possibly wanna put into your video, this will work on. But not only can you put it on anything, it's got a lot of motion to help keep your audience engaged. Now for my example, we're gonna be using text, but like I said, you can put it on whatever you want. So put whatever you wanna use on your timeline and then follow these steps. Now first off, you're gonna to go to the effects controls in the top right and look for an effect called transform. You're gonna find it on your video effects and distort and then just drag it on your text image or whatever you're using. Next, go to the effects controls on the top right and then scroll down a little bit and then uncheck that box that says use composition shutter angle. After that, change your shutter angle value to 360. Next, move your play to the beginning and then hit the stopwatch next to rotation and scale. Next, change your scale value to 15 and then your rotation to 1.5. Then move your playhead forward a bit and set your scale to 110 and then your rotation to negative 1.5. Once again, move your playhead forward a little bit and then change only your scale to 95. For the thousandth and second to last time, playhead forward, scale to 100, and rotation to 0.5. And then for your last keyframe, set your scale to 15 and your rotation to negative 1. Now select all of your keyframes, right click, and select Bezier. After you've done that, go ahead and hit the drop down menu next to scale. Now we're only going to be messing with the front two and last two keyframes, so go ahead and adjust your velocity velocities to look like this. Essentially, we're going to speed in pretty quickly and then slowly grow for the rest of that animation coming in and out. Now you're done and you have a beautiful animation that looks just like this. If your animation is a little wonky, go back and adjust the space in between those different keyframes to find out exactly what you're looking for. But to be honest, these things are basically the same animation, but if you want to do something different, I'm not going to get upset. Now moving on to our second effect, it's going to be that elegant stretch transition. Now you can use this transition in just about any scenario you want, so let's go ahead and show you how to do it. And I also thought it would be pretty great great for us to lead into a picture of me riding a bike as a child. I mean, look at me. Gloves to protect my porpoise little hands. Velcro shoes because I had not yet learned how to tie a basic knot. Wind blowing through my hair. Honestly, it's beautiful. All right, now how to actually do this transition, go ahead, grab another transform out of your effects in the top right, and then drag it onto whatever image or video you're wanting to transition into. Once again, we're going back to the effects controls in the top left, scroll down a little bit until you find transform and then uncheck that box that says uniform scale. After that, once again, we're unchecking that box that says use composition shutter angle and then changing the shutter angle to 360. After that, change your scale heights to 170, your scale width to 220, and then your skew to and then your skew and then your skew to 10 to 10 then go ahead and hit the stopwatch next to scale height, scale width, and skew. I think you're going to move your playhead for as long as you want your transition to last, so quick or slow doesn't really matter. Once you're at the length you want, go ahead and hit the reset keyframe button for all three of those values. Now, final step, go ahead and hit the drop down menu next to all three of those values as well. And then you're going to adjust the velocity of all three of these values in the exact same way. So what you're going to want to do is go down to the velocity of that first keyframe, drag it as far left and as far up as possible, and then you're going to go to that second keyframe, grab that circle, drag it as far left as you can, and then make sure your velocity line lines up with the other side of that keyframe. Once you're done, your graph should look pretty much like this. Then just repeat that for those other two graphs. Now you have this beautiful transition, and we can look at happy little child Jacques riding a bike with the wind in my hair and strength in my wheels. But all jokes aside, when you can compare this to the original that Numby uses, I think we're pretty spot on. And now for our final effect, my personal favorite, this glowing text. And you can also apply this to like an arrow or something like that where you don't really need to see any detail but don't don't put it on the picture of child jock i um i tried that it doesn't it doesn't look well doesn't look well at all now i'm going to be using text for this effect but you're also going to need to do this for whatever color you want your text to glow so first select your text on your timeline and then go to the effects controls in the top left once you're there scroll down a little bit until you see the fill of your text once you see it left click on it to bring up the color selection menu now in my case i'm using the color code fa fa a2 but basically if you want your text to be a different color just choose whatever color you want but make sure it's a light version of that color and by light i mean that circle is in the bottom middle of your color gradient now once you've done this you're going to need to go back to your timeline and make a 
duplicate of that text. So what you're gonna wanna do is hold down the Alt key on your keyboard, left click on that text and then drag up. That'll make a duplicate and then allow us to do all of our fun stuff. Now you're gonna go to the effects in the top right and our first effect you're gonna look for is called Fast Blur. You're gonna see it under Video Effects and Obsolete, take it and then drag it onto that top layer of text. That's gonna be the only effect you need to put on that top text, but for our bottom text, you're gonna need to add three different effects. So for that bottom text, we're gonna add a grid, VR glow, and a drop shadow. Once again, just type them all into the search bar in the effects and then drag them onto that bottom layer. So first up, you're gonna go ahead and select that top layer of text and then go to the effects controls in the top left. After that, go to fast blur and then change your blurriness value to 20. And the last thing you have to do for that top layer is scroll down a bit until you find opacity and then change your opacity value to five. Now, once you've done that, we're done with that top layer of text and go ahead and select the bottom layer of text on your timeline. Once again, we're back in the effects controls in the top left, but, and this is a big but, you need to make sure that your effects are in the correct order because if not, you're gonna get this weird thing this is GPU rendering error or something like that. Don't worry about it. Just make sure that your effects are in this right order. And that correct order would be that your drop shadow on top, your VR glow underneath that, then you have your grid, and then at the very bottom, you're gonna have your text. Now, under your drop shadow, go ahead and change your opacity to 100, your softness to 20, and your distance to 10. After that, go ahead and minimize drop shadow and then move on to VR glow. Now for VR glow, you have to change literally everything. Don't worry. It's not that bad. Go ahead and set your luma threshold to 0.8, your glow distance to 65, your glow brightness to 2.5, your glow saturation to 10. Go ahead and check that box that says use tint color, and then left click on that white rectangle to go ahead and bring up the color selection menu. Now, if you want your text to glow yellow, type in the color code C3C933. And if you want your text to glow any other color, just find your color on that gradient on the right here, and then move your circle to roughly about the same area that I put mine on my gradient. Once you do that, we're done with that VR glow so we can go ahead and move on to the last effect, our grid. Next under that grid, go ahead and go to your size form and change it to width and height. Once you've done that, change your width to 2000, your height to seven and your border to three. Once again, you're gonna left click on that white rectangle to bring up the color selection menu. And then you're gonna type in the color code 7C, 7C, 7C. Finally, go ahead and go to that blending mode and change it to luminosity. And whew, I must say, when you combine those effects together, they are beautiful. You guys like how that came all together at the end? It looks like it was going completely wrong and nothing was gonna work. Then you select that luminosity and just, mwah, it's beautiful. Right at, the, right at the very end too. It's almost like I planned it. I didn't plan it, but I'm gonna act like I did. And when you compare this to Numbies text, it's pretty similar. I didn't get it exactly right just because these effects are kind of finicky. And if you don't know the exact thing he's using and in the exact same way and the exact same program, you're not gonna get it one for one. But this is close enough to where I'm happy with the result. Now, if you want your text to glow just a little bit more, go back to that top layer and then change the opacity that we originally had at five. And then you can move it to 10 or maybe a little bit more, whatever you're feeling to be a little creative, try something different, make this effect your own and uh, have some fun with it. And there you go. We we have three different Numbie effects. I think all of them turned out awesome, turned out pretty close to the original, close enough to where I could be happy enough because, you know, that stupid text. But like I said, they're super close to the original and I love the way these effects look. The jump in and shake animation is a great way to introduce text or a graphic onto your screen. And then we have this awesome stretch transition. It can be used in just about any scenario. And honestly, I don't think I've seen it anywhere else besides a Numbie video. And then lastly, we have this beautiful glowing text. So hopefully you guys liked this video. If you did, make sure to hit like and subscribe. Let me know how you felt down in the comments below. And until next time, peace. Come on, Jeffrey, you can do it. Come on, Jeffrey, put your back into it.